steamy downtown Madison on a Thursday afternoon. The Republican National Convention wraps up tonight in Cleveland. Nominee Donald Trump is set to give the biggest speech of his political career. The director of the Marquette Law School poll is back for day four. And Charles Franklin will also be back with us next week for the Democrats. Good to see you, Charles. Good to be back again. So before we talk about tonight, we've got to talk about last night. Uh, and last night certainly delivered. Uh, Ted Cruz has really stolen the show is the core focus of almost all of the coverage from last night, taking away attention from Governor Walker's speech in which Walker did make the case for Trump, and taking away from uh, the vice presidential nominee, Pence, who gave a very solid workmanlike speech, but in the uh, presence of the Cruz <laughs> speech, it kind of got shoved to the back. Do you think this hurt the Trump campaign at all? I I think it shows that these divisions still exist and that Cruz in particular is not reconciled. He really laid out the ideological case for being a solid conservative and vote your conscience implies Trump may not meet that. But I think the reaction last night and today has been overwhelmingly anti-Cruz and therefore pro-Trump that um, he didn't have to do that. He could have done what others had done. And it reflects that Cruz has some trouble rallying supporters. Uh, he's not very well liked in the party, so there are not other senators, for example, to step forward and back what he says. Let's talk a little bit about Governor Walker's speech. You just touched on it. What did you think of it? it well, it was a lot like his campaign speeches during the presidential run. Uh, high energy, loud. He, he was yelling a little hoarse today, in fact. Um, but it was also interesting that that focused more on Hillary Clinton's weaknesses rather than being a long exposition of Donald Trump's virtues. I think over the last two days, we've actually seen the Trump family fill the role of telling endearing stories about Donald Trump and why he's a good person, our dad who raised us well, and so on. Um, and that's a position that's often left to other politicians to talk about things that a, a nominee has done. It's much more the family here. And Walker covered some, uh, his main ground was Trump is better than Clinton. You've got to vote for Trump. And then the vice president, uh, the vice presidential nominee came out and it was a good speech, but nobody really is talking about it. Yeah, I think the, some of the spin masters I saw afterwards were calling it a home run, a, a <laughs> ten, perfect 10. It was a well-delivered speech, but first of all, Mike Pence is a low-key Midwesterner in his speaking style, mm -hmm. and for him to elevate that either with so soaring rhetoric or with a loud voice is really not his style. So I thought we saw what I said, a very workmanlike speech, a good speech in terms of covering issues that the Republican Party would like to see on the table and their vice president talking about. Uh, it just didn't get as much attention. Last thing was, Cruz did push it past 10 o'clock, and so right. mm -hmm. he went way over on his time limit, and that pushed Pence out of prime time. And tonight, it's Donald's big night. Can I he think, unite the party? Uh, well, uh, it, it's going to take quite a, quite a show tonight. I think the two things to watch for, one is his rhetoric. Do we hear any conciliatory rhetoric reaching out to other candidates? Uh, that hasn't been his style. The other is, uh, I saw a report saying that the text of his speech is being thoroughly vetted again to make sure there's no lingering quotes from somebody that's not attributed, attributed. But the question is, Trump is not at his best with a teleprompter. He's gotten better with it. But his claim to fame are those extemporaneous speeches that he gives at, at uh, rallies. How tonight goes will be very interesting to watch. First, for the content, what does he talk about and who does he talk about? Mm -hmm. But secondly, does he get his strongest case over using a teleprompter as opposed to the, the much harder to predict and much <laughs> uh, uh, more dynamic, shall we say, extemporaneous speeches? So, Should be quite a And 125,000 balloons. Oh, is that what they said? Yeah. Oh, that's that's a great, always <laughs> that's a great. That's a whole shot. lot of puffing. To <laughs> and, and, blow those and now up. tomorrow we we might hear Hillary Clinton's running mate announcement. We have to wrap it up. We'll talk about it tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Cheryl.